In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at confidence intervals. And uh, we're going to start with an example. In a recent election, a poll claims a particular party has 40% of the popular vote. The article claims the statistic is accurate to within 2.5%, 19 times out of 20. That's how it's often stated. Now, a margin of error is a range of values a measurement is supposed to be within. And of course, the smaller, the better. You don't want to be off by too much. A confidence interval is the range of values a measurement is supposed to be within depending upon the level of confidence. And there's different confidence intervals that are often chosen, 90%, 95%, 99%. And these are actually the z-scores from the standard normal table that are associated with these. Basically, if you have a standard normal table, this means that this is the middle 90%. And the z-score is actually 1.645 to give you the middle 90, or the for 95%, it's 1.96. So basically what that means is from a z-score of 1.645 to negative 1.645, there's 90% of the uh, data. From 1.96 to negative 1.6 is 95% of the data. So that's where you get those uh, confidence interval z-scores from. Now, what this above statement actually means is this. If you take this 40% and it says within 2.5%, so if you subtract 2.5% and add 2.5% to 40, it actually, and, and 19 times out of 20, 19 divided by 20 times 100 is 95%. So it actually means that the popularity should vary between 37.5% and 42.5%, 95% of the time. That's what that, that actually means. It's not saying it's exactly 40. It's between 37.5% and 42.5%, 95% of the time. Now, we're going to use this formula on the next couple of pages to, count, uh, to, uh, to calculate some confidence intervals. And uh, the E, the error, is the z-score. Uh, times the root of p times 1 minus p over n. So z is the z-score for the confidence level, whether it's 90%, 95%, or 99. p is the population percentage, and n is the sample size. And again, we'll get into that in, on examples on this page and the next. So this kind of example is one place where you'll see a confidence interval. The uh, MNR, and if you're not in Ontario, Canada, that stands for Ministry of Natural Resources. Okay. performs a catch and release on West Kin Lake each year. In 2013, they caught 325 fish and 201 were walleyes. In the next year, 2014, 405 were caught and 240 were walleye. And we'll get into what this calculation is over here shortly. So in A, it says determine the percent that were walleye each year. So for 2013, we would divide 201 by the 325 fish that were caught, so 62% were walleye that year. And in 2014, we're dividing 240 by 405, which is 0.59 or 59%. So a little different percentage. It's not going to be exactly the same each year. And in B here, it says find the margin of error using a 95% confidence interval. So here's that margin of error formula from the previous page. And the uh, z-score, you'd have to look at excuse me, the previous page for the z-score associated with 95% to see that it's 1.96. This is why we need the p. So the 0.62 goes here and here. And the n, 325 fish were caught, so we put 325 here. So we calculate this, and we get uh, 0 0.053, or sorry, 5.3%. And for 2014, uh, the P is 0.59, and there's 405 fish caught, so the N value is 405, and of course, uh, same uh, confidence interval each year, 95%. And so we get 4.8%. So to calculate the intervals, uh, for 2013, it was 62% was the percentage that were walleye. So we're going 5.3% above that, 5.3% below that. So there's the below, here's the above. And so uh, the confidence interval for 2013 is 56.7% to 67.3%. So that means that uh, uh, there should be between 567 and 67.3% of the fish should be walleye. 
In 2014, we're going to take our 59% here and subtract 4.8 and add 4.8. And so the confidence interval that year extends from 54.2 to 63.8. Now a, co a common question to ask is this last one, is the percentage of walleye in this lake increasing or changing? As long as these confidence intervals overlap at all, then there's there's no evidence that it's actually changing. And 56.7 to 67.3 and 54.2 to 63.8, they do overlap because you see this 63.8 is between the two of these. So there's an overlap between 56.7 and 63.8, which is several percentage points. So the fact that they uh, uh, they over the intervals overlap is not enough to say that the uh, the percentage of walleye is is increasing. Uh, last uh, example number two here uh, in a, in an earlier poll and this is similar to the example from the first page. 88% of uh, 1,200 people surveyed claim they are in favor of the city building a new outside ice surface. And we're asked to find the margin of error using a 90% confidence interval and then calculate the confidence interval. And then we'll get into C here later. So here's our uh, error formula. And so 90% confidence interval, so Z would be 1.645. And again, you can go back to look at the first page if you want to find that number yourself. Uh, P is uh, uh, 0.88 because we're told that. And 1 minus 0.88 here. And there were 1,200 people, so N's 1,200. So that works out to 1.5%. So that's the margin of error. So for B, we take our 88% and subtract 1.5 and add 1.5. And so the confidence interval extends from 86.5% to 89.5%. Okay. So we're uh, so that's the that's the confidence interval for B. Now for C here, Oh, and this is just the calculation show where I got the 1.5 here. In C, in a new survey, 75% instead of 88, 75% were in favor of building the new outside arena using a confidence interval of 90% and a margin of error of 4%. So we're told the uh, the confidence interval, uh, sorry, uh, we're, we're told the uh, confidence interval of 90% and the margin of error is 4%. And we're asked to find how many people are included in the survey. So you see, in this formula, we know this, and we know this, and we know P, and we're trying to find N. How many people? That's N. So in the formula, we're going to fill in the, we're going to calculate for N. We want to solve for N here. So what I've done from the formula pay, uh, step to this step is I've squared both sides. So when you square E, that's why this is E squared. Z squared would be Z squared. And when I square this big square root, I get rid of the square root. Because remember, squaring and square root are opposite operations. Now, what I'm going to do next is, see, I want to, I'm, I'm trying to isolate for N here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by N. And that's so that these will divide out. We'll go back to the arrow here. And so those after those divide out, this is what the next line looks like. So n e squared equals z squared and then p1 minus p. Now I'm trying to isolate for n here. So we'll bring the pen back. So I'm going to divide by e squared. And when I do that, these e squareds divide out. And so n is equal to z squared p times 1 minus p, which is what's going to come up here over e squared. So now we can fill in our values. The um, confidence interval is 90%, so the z would be 0.645 that's being squared. 75% is the p value, so 0.75 here, uh, 1 minus 0.75 in the brackets. And the margin of error is 4%, so 0.04 is 4%, so it's 4% we're squaring here. And so if we calculate that, this is my calculation here, I get 317, and of course we would drop the decimal because it's a number of people, we can't have a part of a person. So that means that 317 people were included in the second survey. And that's the end of the tutorial.